Ziller Inks takes its name from Steven Ziller, a graduate from Disneyland College. He went to work for F.W. Tamblin Studio and purchased the business from Tamblin. Master penman Vivian Mongol apprenticed with Ziller, and she and her husband became partners with Ziller Studio. Ziller inks offer a variety of very vibrant colors. The glossy black comes in both pre-mixed and ink powder form. For the ink powder, you add boiling water to the neck of the jar and stir to mix. The powder is mostly white in color with red and black specks. It is quite gummy and thick to mix. I used a newly prepped Leonard principle and immediately after mixing, it did not flow very well. I diluted it further with water until I achieved a good flow. All the Ziller inks in general are quite gummy or sticky, but the powder glossy black is especially so, so make sure to clean your nibs frequently. I love how bright and accurate the colors are, and it's a bonus that they have such poetic names and are acrylic-based, waterproof, and archival. Compared to, say, McCaffrey, the hairlines are thicker and darker, but the pro of Ziller inks is how lively the colors are. They do not dull or darken as much with drying. Compared to the Vermilion Sumi, the Prairie Fire Orange has a slightly heavier hairline, but the color is more fierce and appears more reddish orange. The sunflower yellow is surprisingly opaque and visible on white paper. Be sure to use it with an unstained nib so you do not have other colors you do not want appearing in the swell. All the colored inks dry with a clean matte finish. I tried thinning the Wild Viola Violet ink down to see if I can achieve a thinner hairline. For these capitals, I used the ink straight out of the bottle, but for the lower cases, I wrote with the diluted ink. The hairlines lighten in color, but the widths of the hairlines do not change much.
When I diluted the colored inks, I noticed when trying a large swell that the pigments are ground super fine, which explains how smooth the inks are and how well the pigments stay in suspension. It also means that too much dilution would make them more transparent. Perhaps it may be helpful to note that the gloss in the glossy black mellows with dilution. The buffalo brown dries a little darker than walnut ink crystals. It appears more like a dark chocolate color than walnut ink. The soot black has slightly finer hairlines than the glossy black. It does dry with a matte finish and there perhaps isn't a more suitable name for this ink. The North Wind White is the only Ziller ink that's separated for me so far. The pigments in the white are less fine than they are in the colored inks, so it requires frequent stirring. The consistency was very watery and I added some Ziller ink thickener. It lightened up the hairline significantly, but the swells were still on the watery side. I have not felt the need to thicken up any other Ziller inks beside the white for pointed pen or broad pen work, but if your paper and tools require a thicker ink consistency, perhaps with brush, it's good to know that the solution is available. The link to purchase is in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more calligraphy videos and thank you so much for watching.